Welcome to A1 Webcam's Control Center software training. In this session, I'm going to go over Control Center Monitor live viewing program. Once you install Control Center software, you notice you have three icons on your desktop, the Control Center Monitor, the Control Center Playback, and the Control Center Configuration Tools. Go ahead and click on the Control Center Monitor for me. You double click, and it's going to open up a window named Control Center Monitor Login. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to log in by using the default user ID and password unless you have changed it already. The default username is administrator with a capital A and the password is admin all lowercase admin. Now once you've entered in both the username and password, go ahead and make sure that the save username and save password checkboxes are checked off. That way next time you log in, you don't have to enter them in again. Once you've done this, go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, it's going to go ahead and load up Control Center software onto your computer. Now, if this is your first time opening up Control Center software, you're not going to have any DVRs added to your, your software. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to do that. There are a couple ways to add a DVR into your software. The first and most common way is to add it on a computer that's on the same local network as the DVR, which means that I have a computer in a building and the DVR is located in that same building sitting in the same computer network. If there is, and that is the case, you will notice a little plus sign pop up to local area units. I'm going to go ahead and click that plus sign and you see we actually have a few DVRs here on our network. So I'm going to go ahead and add those DVRs for you by clicking on the left, left clicking on the little gray disk drive and dragging it up over the words my units. Once you do that, let go of the left mouse button and you'll see a window pop up called add unit. In here, in this window, you'll notice that the local IP address of the DVR will be grayed out but listed at the very top. Underneath there, you'll see the unit information of the DVR. And below that is where you need to enter in the username and password of the DVR. Now, some people change the username and password of the DVR, and if you have done so, you need to make sure that you enter in the right information. However, if you're still using the default username and password for the old uh, Triton HD DVRs, it is admin all lowercase for the user ID and admin all lowercase for the password. Once you've entered both those in, make sure that the save password checkbox is checkmarked and click OK. Now if you look over here now over underneath my units, you'll see that you have a little gray disk drive with a plus sign to the left. And every once in a while you may see the gray disk drive flash. That's just showing you that there's an alarm or motion being triggered at that second. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add the new Triton HD E-Series DVR. I'm going to do the same thing, left click, hold down on the left mouse button, drag it up over the words My Units, let go of the button, and it'll pull up the window. The only difference between the other DVR and this DVR is that the password is, instead of admin for the password, it's going to be admin for the user ID and 12345 for the password. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and now I've got my second DVR added underneath my units. Now you can also add a DVR and view it remotely over the internet. Now please keep in mind that if you're trying to connect to your DVR over the internet, there are there is a procedure involved in configuring your router to do port forwarding so that you can see it from the outside world. By default, most networks are closed out to the outside world for security purposes, so the DVR will not be able to connect to it remotely by default. So if you haven't set that up, go ahead and contact a computer or an IT person within the company or uh, like the Geek Squad or someone at an at a electronic store and have them come out and set up the port forwarding. Um, however, if this is already done, what you want to do to add a unit remotely is you want to right click on My Units, go to Add Unit, and you'll see the same Add Unit window appear, but the difference is now you see that the IP address is not grayed out anymore. It's, it's open so you can type it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a DVR that's remote. And what you're going to do is you're going to enter in the static IP address of the router, which you've already done the port forwarding in, that points to the DVR. And let's go ahead and do that, which is 65.119.7.207. Now this is just a sample DVR um, that we set up so I can show you how to add it remotely. Um, go ahead and click the advanced tab when you're done and this is where you're going to choose the port. Now the port number you're going to have to configure in the DVR and in the router and this is the port number that you use on both the router and the DVR. So this one was we kept at the default port 80. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click find 
It's going to search the internet, try to find that DVR, find that DVR and pull it up. Once the DVR pulls it up, then you're going to enter in the username and password. And remember, for the E series, because this is the MD400E, you're going to type 12345 and click OK. Now you see how it's added that DVR in my list of DVRs under my units. So the first two, remember, we added via the local area units by dragging it. Now the third DVR, we add it remotely by right-clicking on my units and clicking Add Unit. Now the third way to add a DVR is by dynamic using a group ID. Now let me explain group ID really fast. Sometimes you have an internet connection where your IP address of your router is constantly changing. So there's no way to know exactly what the address is. What you can do in the DVR is assign a group ID to that DVR and set it up to register on our registration server. So what you do is if it's your first time, you're going to enter in this registration server number 210.116. .114.37 in this field. Then you're going to go over here to the right where you find the group ID and type in the group ID you assigned to the DVR in the configuration. We're going to go into a sample unit here, Express Lube, and I think this one is one of a, a customer that has our DVR. So I click Find by Group ID and it pulls up. You left click on that, it'll find it, and it takes a second and there's your unit information. Then you go ahead and type in the, uh, the correct password, you click OK, and it should pop up with a plus sign. may take a little bit longer, but there we go, underneath my units. So now I've showed you how to add the DVRs both from the local network, remotely using a static IP address, and remotely using the group ID. I'm going to go ahead and delete these two DVRs here because we don't need those in there. And we're going to move on. Now this main screen here to the right is the viewing screen. This is where you're going to see all your video. If you left click on the, the little disk drive, it pulls up all the video, or it'll close it all, or you can left click individually on each camera to pull up video. Now you can change the viewing mode of how you see the cameras by clicking on these blue buttons up here. Viewing 1, 4, 9, 13, 16, and so forth, all the way to 64 cameras at a time. Um, the little button to the left of these numbers with the up, down, left, right arrow is full screen. You click that button and it pulls up your view mode full screen. To get out of here, you click the escape button at the top left of your keyboard and you're back to your regular window. Now, if you look down at the bottom here, this is your status and action screen. This lists all your DVRs and lists the current status of each DVR. If you look to the right of the DVR unit name, you've got these little cameras with the little orange AOL looking guys that are popping up, which showing you that there's a motion detection trigger on that channel. You got sensor input monitoring, which will turn each one of these blue sensor inputs will turn red if a sensor goes off. You can actually hit these relay buttons to actually control the relay output of your DVRs. You can click the little microphone to speak in your computer mic like I'm doing right now and actually whatever I'm saying will come out of the speakers if you have speakers hooked up to your DVR on site at location. Um, the rest monitors are recording and the current time of your DVR. Now if I click on the alarm log down here it's going to show me a real-time log of all the DVRs I have added in my software and this real-time log will show you motion detection, sensors, relays, POS text insertion, all this will be listed and in real time and showing you in current real time what's going on with your DVRs. I'm going to go back to status and action and move up to the top. Um, other things that you can do, I'm going to go through these icons. Now remember, this software looks a lot more complex than it actually is. The icons at the very top are repetitive. These are the same options that you're going to get when you go through these drop down menus. So either way you can get to <coughs> all these options by clicking in the drop down menu or by clicking on the icons. First icon right here that I'm going to show you is the Unit Explorer and the Event History. By clicking on these you see how it removes the, uh, the site tree or the status and action menu. It's just a little toggle button that will remove it. It will help you enlarge the video but still keep this menu at the top. The next two icons is the playback and the configuration tools icon. The playback icon, when you click on it, which I'm not going to do right now, will pull up the playback screen and the configuration tool button will actually pull up your configuration tool screen. The next button that you're going to see is called an event search utility. What this does is when you click on it, it's going to load a little window screen that will allow you to search through all your events based on a certain time. So I can go back to, let's say, 4-13-2009 um, at a certain time and do a duration of uh, one minute. And I can choose my uh, DVR and I can choose a category, whether it's an event, 
an error a status a tech POS text insertion or user login logouts basically um, it, it'll list all these so we'll go ahead and click find and there's no logs there but we'll, we'll do all every DVR and see if there's anything that it pulls up here no no logs for uh, uh, that date so we'll move forward a little bit and we'll go to August 10th and still no logs so we'll do a one day or 12 hour and we'll see what pops up with 12 hours now you can see all these events happening within 12 hour period after 906 in the morning on the 10th of August so you can print this you can do a print preview you can save this as a text file um, or you can uh, actually go in there and delete certain parts out of the log so we're gonna go ahead and exit out of here and we're gonna go move on here now you've got the little world button the world button here when you click on it is goes to the options menu now this options menu helps you configure this actual installation of control center on this computer so the first option is display it goes through all the display options that you can go and configure like under captions you can change, add the unit name the channel number the channel name which actually overlays a video so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of here double click on a video so you can see one full screen then I'm gonna go back into the op display menu and I'm gonna add the channel number the time zone and click OK and if you go here now it's got the time zone the channel number everything is included in here so now I'm gonna go back into the options menu and you can go in there you can change the size the color um, you can uh, this, if you're doing a switching sequential switching which changes from camera to camera you can tell to use monitor one only how long do you want the each channel to stay up there for in second durations um, basically these are just all the displaying options in here that you can configure the next one is the record option this is where it's going to tell you uh, it, where it's going to save your video and also your snapshots when you do on the fly recording or snapshots when what I mean by on the fly is I'm gonna go ahead and close this out when I right click here I can go record start or I can go save as both of these will do a live real-time recording or a live snapshot and it'll save it in that place where where we were looking here back in record so basically if I were to do a live recording it's gonna save it under CC quick recording site name the year the date dot re4 and if I do the uh, save image, it's going to save it as a bitmap, and it's going to save it on the C drive under CC image site name, blah, 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 dot bitmap. Um, and the preservation, it'll keep it there for five days, and you can change that as well. The next one is alarm notification. This is if you're using this as like a control center type software where you're doing live view like a like a guard shack type application. Um, you can do alarm pop-ups based on motion detection or sensors or text inputting, and you can have it pull up that channel uh, for a certain duration of seconds. Other options are having it doing a loud buzzing sound, making the monitor blink. Um, or pulling up the alarm log. So there's different uh, configurations and different options for using alarm notification. And finally, we have the layout manager. Now, Control Center Standard, which is the software that uh, we offer with our DVRs for free, um, allows dual monitor support. So if your computer has uh, support for dual monitors, which mine does, you can actually check off the second monitor button and have it do specific things. So in one monitor, I've, I can be doing the site view map, alarm log status action just the main default settings and on the second one I could do let's say um, the site view set only or a mapping function or just the monitoring or whatever I want to do any type of configuration I want and we also have preset templates in there <coughs> that you can try it as well I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of here the next icon you're gonna see up here is the add button this is a quick way for you to go in here and add a new DVR next one is uh, edit button if you have a DVR highlighted you can actually click this and go and edit your DVR maybe change a password in there um, you can delete DVRs you can do view sets now what view sets are is you click this little button down here this is a view set I'm gonna go ahead and right click add view set what it does is it will actually allows you to create presets so let's say that I have 10 DVRs and they're looking at retail stores and each DVR has a register uh, on one of the channels I can actually create a preset I would go into uh, 13 channels because if it was 10 DVRs and I would go in here and select channel 1 there which is, will pretend is a register in the first uh, location uh, channel 1 here will pretend that that's a register in the second location and so forth and then I'll name it registers and I click OK 
and now I've got registers up here you can left click on this it'll automatically pull it up so it's basically a preset a quick way for you to pull up multiple channels from different DVRs instantly without having to open up all the DVRs and click on them one at a time and you can save as many as you want of those view sets the next one is map mapping what it does is it actually you can create a map and I, I create a little sample here and uh, you can actually drag cameras on here let's say you have a, a, a an image uh, that you have like a floor plan of a, of a building you can actually pull that up drag the alarms the relays the sensors the cameras and pull it up and you can view them with the live viewer and and look at the map at the same time so it's a mapping function um, we're gonna go back to the site tree and uh, we're gonna move on uh, sequential switching um, that was what I was saying before is you can create a sequential switching whatever view you're in let's say that I'm in single channel view it'll move from each cam from camera one to camera two to camera three to camera four all the way through all your cameras and all your DVRs and it'll stay open for whatever seconds that you have in that options menu configured um, that's pretty much it with the uh, control center monitor program these two options over here the frame rate and resolution these are used uh, only used for old EDVR series um, which we sold a couple years ago maybe two three years ago um, since that DVR is discontinued now but people still have that DVR we still have that feature in there but uh, it's not available with the new DVRs if you have any questions please feel free to call us at 1-800-616 7986 and ask for support. Thank you very much and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.